I just wanted to uh, do a quick demonstration on how to color everything on a single layer. Now, it's not necessarily something I recommend doing, uh, but I figured some people would might um, enjoy just seeing how it's done. Uh, now, this is actually close to how I used to color when I first started and how I was taught to do it. And the main reason um, I was, you know, was taught this way is because, you know, I start, well, I started coloring professionally in 2003. I started learning how to color a few years before that. So if you remember the way computers were and, you know, Photoshop software was in the early 2000s, you know, that kind of answers the question because uh, a lot of times those computers, um, you know, files would quickly get large and so those computers and the software, you know, the performance would slow down. Uh, so in order just to keep a productive rate, uh, you know, it was good to keep your um, memory on your files as low as possible. And one way to do that is to... Um, not use layers because layers increases the size of the file. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to show you how this is done. Um, just going to jump right into it. Uh, first, here's a TIFF file of something I worked on back in the day. I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file really quick. There we go. Um, also, this technique really only works uh, if you're using line art that has been bitmapped, um, which means all the pixels are either 100% black or 100% white. There's no gray tone in between. You know, zoom in. See, it's just all black and white pixels when you zoom in. Okay. Um, so right now I'm going to go over to the channels palette and we can see right now it's on bitmap color mode. Um, this needs this technique needs to be done in CMYK, so I'm going to go over to image mode, first convert to grayscale, and then from grayscale I can put into CMYK. There we go. And so now, of course, you you have your traditional CMYK or you know cyan, magenta, yellow, black channels over here. Right now they're all selected, and if I want to, I can go through and view each individual one. All right, and then when you hit CMYK, you automatically select all of them. Now, um, mind you, it's been a while since I've done it this way, so uh, I may forget something, so just bear with me. Uh, but I believe if I ho hold down, see, is it Command? No, Option, I think, and then select the black channel. Okay, that selects only the black channel. Hold on. That selects that. How do I do this? All right, maybe I do it like this. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to select cyan, hold down, shift. There we go. So now cyan, magenta, and yellow are the only only channels selected, but I'm going to turn, and you can see there's grays underneath here, So, but I'm going to turn on the black channel. Now I am going to hit Command A to select all, W to go to my wand, and I am going to hit contiguous, hold down, Alt or Option. So now just the panels are selected and then I am going to fill that with white color. So now if I turn off the eyeball on the black channel, all those grays are gone. And you notice like some of the pixels that weren't closed so it got in there. But anyway, so I'm going to just go um, actually I want to see what the image size here is. Okay, so this is 600 dpi. So I'm going to go over to select, modify, contract pixels because I want my, the edges of my selection to be underneath the line. 
I'm actually going to go with six. I'm going to see how that looks. Yeah, see? See, now you see that my um, selection is right in the middle of the line. I'm going to pick a color to fill this with. And so you see it filled in the thing, but since I don't have the black channel selected, it's not affecting the black channel. So I can view the black channel and color underneath it. Then I can come in here and quickly select the areas that were left white. Fill those in. And you also notice that when I use the selection tool, it's not counting the black channel because it's not on. So I can just check the flats or select the flats. So now I'm just going to go in here and quickly put a little bit of flat color on some of these characters. I'm not going to be too precise here because I'm mostly just demonstrating this technique. So I'm just being kind of rough with my selections. Yeah, and this page is from a book I did in the first, uh, or a series I worked on the first several years of my career called uh, Zombies That Ate the World. And it was written by Jerry Frisson uh, with artwork by Guy Davis, and I did the colors. Uh, and it was published by Humanoids. It's kind of a, you know, it's a zombie comic, but it was heavy on the satire. And it was kind of fun because it's different than uh, most comics, you know, we get here in the States. And there have been uh, English translations, which you um, probably still can still find, since I think Humanoids has been publishing this again. I think they continued the series uh, with a different art team recently. So if you're interested in looking for it.
All right, there you go. I just got some quick local flat colors in there. Um, of course, if you wanted to um, unify this a little bit so that the colors aren't as, um, you know, aren't as saturated, you, know, you can always go to, let's see, actually edit. Yeah, you can always go to fill and I'll just put in, oh, I can't do a color. Interesting. Well, I can put in a multiply over the whole thing with the main color. That does it. I thought you could use. Interesting. I could have sworn you could have you you used to be able to use um, a color layer or not layer but a color fill. Oh well. Um, so now I'll just go in and do some quick rendering. Choose linear dodge. And of course you can go in and create some quick cuts. Brush it. Yep. Keep it a little bit light. There you go. Again, I'm just doing some really quick, rough rendering just to give you the idea of what you can do. And if you do do it this way, um, I do suggest once you've completed the flats, you save you save a um, um, a separate file with just the flat. So just in case you need those flats to come referred to. Of course, you could also um, you know in in the spirit of keeping it s small, you could keep a uh, grayscale version of the flats as an alpha channel.
Also, I should mention that uh, if you are enrolled in the bundle over at learntocolor.com, you can access this line art and a lot more in the practice line art resource. All right. Quick background. Have that there you go. There we go. And see, there you go. I've rendered an entire panel. Uh, and everything is still on a single layer, including the line art. And yet, if you view the line art, um, everything is underneath it. Now, um, a few more notes. Um, one of the other things is, uh, when, you know, whenever you're uh, doing you know, bitmap line art like this, um, there's always a chance that the color is going to show through these blacks when it goes into print. So you're going to want to put, um, you're going to want to put a color underneath this. Uh, this is called trapping. So you do that, you can hit command, select the line art, I'm going to select, modify, I'm going to contract it again. Oops. Ah, I need to inverse. Okay, hold on. There we go. Make sure it's just the line art selected. I have the everything but the line art selected. Okay, now modify, contract. And see, and then once again, you see, you have just a little bit of area that's underneath here. Uh, the reason why you want to contract it like this is because if um, you know when it goes through the printing process you know you're putting layers of ink onto paper and the ink is wet and paper warps when it's wet so it's possible that it could move around a little bit so if there's slight shifting when each of the plates are printing you want to make sure that this color is stays underneath the black and that's why you give it this little buffer of um, you know what we call trapping underneath there. All right, and then we select a solid color and we fill. And now we have this trapped area. Um, also, all right, I'm going to now, uh, like if you want to do color holds um, or, you know, turn some of the lines into color, all right, now I'm going to just select the black channel, turn off the view on the other channels. I'll go through, and say I'm going to select this line because it's more of a shadow line. All right, use the wand to deselect the white bits. So now I just have that line selected, 
Now I go up to hit CMYK so all the channels are selected. Use the color picker to pick that color there and fill. So now the so now that line is color. Um, and you can go over and do glows. I now doing this process, I never got nice glows. Um, so if you can avoid a glow, that'd probably be preferable. Um, but it's one of the reasons why I kind of evolved my um, process to what it is today, to what I you know, and to what I teach in my course, simply because uh, I wanted some nice, rich glows that I can put over the line art. But for you know, a basic, uh, simple rendering style, you can absolutely get away with doing a color on a single layer. And yeah, so this panel. And with the trapping underneath it and the color holds, it's all ready for print. Um, also, another added benefit uh, doing it this way, uh, because you know if you work in RGB, um, there's a way to um, indicate the ink limit, which I'm not going to get into that right now. That um, I might do another video on ink limits in the future, but basically, it, uh, most publishers you'll know, want a certain ink limit, and actually Marvel recommends a 300% ink limit. Uh, but since you're not, when you're putting down the colors, you're not filling anything in black. So if there's any K tone in the colors you selected, none of that K tone's going to come through when you lay it down, and that means you will have um, no more than a 300% ink limit on your colors. Uh, so that is one of the added benefits of doing it this way. Uh, you know, again, it's it's something you might want to uh, try and play around with. I think it's, you know, helpful to understand like different things you can achieve in Photoshop. Though, you know, unless you're doing like a simple rendering style like this, uh, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It is useful to use uh, layers and there's really no reason to do it this way anymore. Uh, but it, you know, it's something that you can do, and that's how it's done. <laughs> All right. Um, hope you found this uh, enlightening at the very least. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, just one more thing. Um, I recently launched a coffee or kofi.com page um, and if you're not familiar with the website it's basically a way for um, a creator's audience to support that creator by buying that creator a coffee or at least uh, donating the amount of what a coffee would cost as an act of support um, I just wanted to show you a quick overview of what I did with the page, um, because you'll notice that uh, here I'm, you know, just posting some of the work I've done. So I'll be posting some of my older work, some of my newer work, so probably some work in progresses. Like here's some like before and after comparisons. Um, at the same time, uh, one of the things I decided to do was to give a bonus to anyone who did choose to uh, buy me a coffee. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is when, when you buy me a coffee you'll get a, a thank you message and in there I've put links to where you can download some of my actual work files um, from some of the things I've colored. So right now I've put up the work files that I used to color this Star Trek Green Lantern number five cover uh, several years back and so you know you would be able to download the files and go through see how I set up my layers and you know just get in there and see how exactly how I uh, broke up all the colors and you know see all the details I figure uh, especially people who follow my YouTube channel might be interested in this because it's you know not every day that uh, you get to see a colorist digital file so I just thought that would be a nice added benefit and incentive if anyone did want to um, support some of my endeavors by using uh, the Kofi page so um, that's all I wanted to mention oh 
I did, did want to say that you know every month, like on the fifteenth, I am going to try and um, swap out whatever the downloadable bonus is. Uh, so it'll probably usually be a work file. Maybe it might be something else that's uh, just as cool if I think of something else. Um, so yeah, so so every month uh, on the fifteenth there'll be something new. So next month I will put something new up there. Um, so yeah. Anyways, that's all I wanted to mention, and uh, thank you again, and yep, see you next time.